students uh, welcome you all to part 2 of uh, data related issues uh, in this particular session we are going to see about different types of data sets uh, that is record data graph based data and ordered data so when i say types of data set uh, we have three types as i told we have record data we have graph based data and we have ordered data right so first uh, coming to what a record data is record data is nothing but a data set of which is a collection of uh, Uh, data objects are also called as records so generally represented in a tabular form like this so which is having uh, a fixed number of uh, data fields uh, called as uh, attributes and uh, n number of records it will be having uh, which is also referred to as data objects uh, when you see these data objects these data objects will have a fixed number of attributes that is there are five attributes and 10 records present in this particular record data which is shown and generally when we consider attributes here these attributes are not having a explicit relationship among themselves also record data can be stored in flat files or rdbms so there are again several types of record data that is existing which are classified as transaction data data matrix and sparse data matrix so first let us consider a transaction data transaction data is nothing but a special kind of record data so which is having uh, or which involves uh, uh, each data objects has a set of items in it so this can be considered as a transaction data as we can see a tabular representation where you have a, a fixed number of fields there are two fields which are considered to be as objects and uh, there are five records which are transaction data right so here uh, this is also referred to as market basket data that is uh, Uh, because uh, in this kind of uh, uh, data set we'll generally we have uh, uh, the items purchased by a particular customer or a particular person okay so here uh, when we consider attributes uh, these attributes will be generally a binary attributes that is uh, either represented as uh, a zero or one whose attribute values can be zero or one that is when i say this here in case of uh, transaction data when i say uh, zero it means that a particular item is not purchased and when i say one a particular item is being purchased in that particular transaction okay uh, and also transaction data might be might also contain attributes which are of uh, uh, discrete or uh, continuous type example if you consider uh, number of items being purchased uh, so it will be uh, discrete uh, and also it is continuous whereas uh, if you consider uh, uh, amount spent on a particular transaction if we consider that as an attribute then even that value values of that particular attribute will be discrete as well as continuous so this is about a transaction data which is a special type of record data the so next let us consider uh, what is a data matrix if a data object is a collection of data with fixed attributes uh, then it is treated as a point in a multi dimensional space so such data objects can be represented as a m cross n matrix where you will be having a m number of rows and each row will have one object and you will be having n number of columns which represents the attributes so here generally the data attribute values will be a fixed set of values so this matrix we consider to be as a data matrix or also it is uh, uh, called as a, a pattern matrix as well so we can consider uh, this data matrix to be as a variation of the record data uh, because it contains only the numeric values so when since this is a matrix uh, type uh, we can tell that uh, the standard matrix operations uh, are like any transformations or manipulations to be performed can be applied on this particular type of uh, data that is data matrix and when coming to the sparse data matrix this is nothing but a, a special type of data matrix so why i am considering this as a special type of data matrix here is because uh, in this the attributes are of uh, are the same types and are asymmetric in nature so this is an example for uh, your uh, sparse data matrix wherein you will be having attributes uh, present uh, there are uh, n number of attributes as well as you have data objects uh, which are uh, nothing but the asymmetric values so um, if i am representing a transaction data in 
terms of this, then the transaction data can also be considered or the sparse data matrix can also be considered as a transaction data. So if you take this example here, what actually it tells is these are the words, these the attributes listed here, these are the words which are present in these three documents. So the value here represent the frequency of appearance of these words in this particular document. So whenever it, wherever you find zero, which means that that particular word here, say coach is zero in document one, which means that the term coach is not present in document one. So similarly, likewise, in all these places where zeros are present, it means that that particular word or that particular attribute type is not present in that particular a respective documents. So this is a sparse data matrix. So this is about your record data wherein you will be having three variations that is transaction data, data matrix and sparse data matrix. So next type of uh, data that we have uh, in uh, data set, the type of data set is graph based data. So we know that uh, the best way of representing any concept is through visualization. Uh, when I say visualization, it is in the form of graph. So when we consider data mining, uh, here also graph happens to be the a convenient and a powerful representation of uh, data. Uh, so we are going to consider uh, two specific cases uh, uh, with respect to the graph-based data. The first case is uh, a graph that captures the relationship among the objects, uh, whereas the second case is the data objects were themselves represented as a graph. Uh, let us consider each of these two cases individually. So when we consider uh, data with relationship among the objects, uh, as we have been discussed earlier, uh, identifying the relationship between the objects is very important. Uh, this is because uh, in such cases, uh, analysis becomes very easier. There is another uh, reason why relationship among the objects is important. That is because uh, when such relationships are identified, it tends to give uh, a more detailed information than actually what we require. Also, uh, when we have a relationship being identified, we can represent them in the form of graphs. So such graph represents the data objects as nodes and the relation is represented using the link between the nodes. So here the two important terms that comes here as node and link. As you already know, a particular any graph you consider, you'll be having points, whereas the points is, represent, uh, is considered here as nodes and uh, uh, line connecting the points and that line here is represented as a relationship. So to give an example for this particular uh, uh, type of uh, graph based data, we can consider uh, web pages. So we, we know that uh, every web page will consist of text apps as well as it will have hyperlinks. So here uh, we consider each web page as a node and the hyperlink present in each page would be considered as the relationship because uh, Whenever we have a hyperlink given, it means that uh, that particular link would give us a more detailed information than the information that is present in the particular web page. So this, uh, this is what uh, the relationship among the objects. Now, uh, let us go to uh, the next type that is the data with objects uh, uh, that are represented as a graph. So here we will deal with uh, objects that has a structure in it. So when I say structure in it, those objects which has a sub object and they themselves has some kind of relationship. So example, I can consider a molecular structure of a particular chemical. So here, if you are familiar with this particular structure, so this is a benzene ring, right? So here atoms inside, here atoms, these atoms are the, I can consider this as a data objects, whereas they are linked with each other. Uh, there is some kind of relationship exists. Also, you have a substructure that is uh, these uh, atoms are present here is also related to other atoms. So this kind of uh, graph, uh, uh, we call it as objects uh, themselves represented as a graph. So graphical representation of such objects uh, helps to identify uh, which substructure occur frequently in the given data set. This kind of mining is a separate branch and is often referred to as a substructure mining. So this is about the graph-based data. So in case of graph-based data, we will be considering two cases. One is uh, a relationship existing among the uh, objects and uh, data objects are themselves represented as a graph.
So now let us move on to the uh, next type of uh, uh, data type that is uh, ordered data. Okay, so when I say ordered data, here uh, the data sets, uh, the uh, objects among or the attributes among uh, uh, them, uh, attribute among themselves will have uh, some kind of order existing. And this order can be with respect to the temporal and uh, spatial aspects. So there are different uh, types of ordered data that is uh, sequential data, uh, sequence data, time series data, and spatial data. So let us consider each one of this uh, uh, individually and learn in detail what they actually represent. First, let us consider uh, sequential data. So this is an extension of uh, record data. It is also referred to as the temporal data. That is, here each record will have uh, time associated with it. So example, uh, consider uh, the data set of a grocery shop, uh, which is represented in this form, uh, formula here. What does this represent us at the particular time? Uh, the, who is the customer who has, uh, who has come for the purchase? And what items has been purchased? So this is a, a transaction data. So the, this actually is a transaction data which we have uh, studied uh, with respect to the record data, right? Now, suppose consider the same information is represented in this particular format. If I'm going to change this format as a sequential data, then this is how it looks. So here, what I'm doing is instead of uh, with respect to the time, I'm uh, uh, representing the same uh, data set or the transaction data with respect to the customer who has been purchased. So in this particular table here in the sequential form, what I've done is I've given importance to the customer and uh, uh, against the customer, I am I'm representing the time uh, during which he has come for the purchase and what is the item that has been purchased. So here we have uh, some sort of sequence being followed in representing the data. So this type of representation will be considered to be as a sequential data. So hope it is understood, right? So uh, next uh, we can consider sequence data. So what is this sequence data? If the data set has uh, data as a sequence of individual entities, then such data set is said to be a sequence data. So this looks similar to the sequential data set uh, but the difference here is uh, sequence data will not have time element involved in it. In case of sequential data, as we have seen, we have time involved, but here in case of sequence data, we don't have a, a time element being involved. But uh, uh, there should be something else, right? So here, uh, order will be involved. Order in which they are represented will be involved. Example is the genetic information. Now. So when I consider genetic information of a human, if I consider a human genome data, which looks like this, uh, which is having G, G, T, T, C, C, with this is nothing but uh, uh, guanine, uh, thymine, cytosine, uh, adenine, adosine. Uh, so this example, you will observe that the genetic uh, information being represented in the form of a sequence of nucleotides that are also known as genes. So here uh, you might get a question, uh, uh, what is that is, uh, um, why this is taken as an example here, why you, we have, why have considered human genome data as an example and how data mining uh, is used here, right? Uh, so many of the problems are associated with uh, genetic sequence data. Uh, some of those problems involve predicting the similarity in the structure and predicting the function of the genes from the similarities found. So to solve these kind of problems uh, with respect to uh, genome data, we can apply a data mining task. Now the next type of data is time series data. This type of data sets are considered to be as a special type of uh, a sequential data. So why is that so? Uh, it is because this data set has a data which are series of measurements taken over a time. So example, uh, data set containing the information about temperature from uh, uh, past 10 years. Uh, so that can be considered as an example here. Uh, so in, in data of uh, this sort, that is in a time series data, the important uh, uh, word that comes to uh, picture is uh, autocorrelation. So uh, when we say about autocorrelation, uh, we can tell that uh, uh, first we need to know what is a correlation, right? So it is a measure that shows the extent to which uh, two or more variable uh, fluctuate together. So that is what is correlation is. 
so there are uh, it might be a positive correlation or a negative correlation so if we consider positive correlation uh, one variable increases when the other uh, also increases uh, we say that uh, uh, it is a the two variables are positively correlated for example uh, when we consider the revenue of the company and the expenditure of the company as the revenue increases uh, we know that even the expenditure also increases if the revenue is decreasing uh, the expenditure is also decreasing so this kind of relationship among the variable we call it as a positive correlation when i consider negative correlation uh, if one variable is uh, decreasing the we can find the increase in the other variable so such type of correlation if if it exists we call it as a negative correlation for example uh, say consider uh, uh, a person uh, his uh, when i consider a person and uh, the amount of time he is spending in office and at home say consider if he is spending more time at office which means that he is spending less time at home and vice versa is also possible if a person is spending more time in home at home which means that he is spending less time in office right so you can see that as one variable is increasing the other variable is decreasing so this type of correlation will be considered to be as a negative correlation but now we want what we want here is auto correlation right so auto correlation it is same as calculating the correlation between two time series except that the same time series is used twice one is the original other is the lagged one so example consider if it is raining today then it is likely to rain tomorrow than if it is clear today so which means suppose consider if i am having a rain today i can tell that it also might rain tomorrow but suppose if it is a, uh, it is a clear today we are seeing a clear sky today uh, is it possible for us to guess that it may rain tomorrow no right so this type of relation we call it as a auto correlation fine so here when i say, uh, we are we are about to talk about a temporal auto correlation so what is this temporal auto correlation is a uh, say consider it is nothing but two measurements that are close in time will often have a very similar values so what i mean uh, here is suppose consider i am finding the temperature at two different time intervals at a different time intervals let us assume that uh, uh, time interval t1 and t2 uh, just differ by one minute so i am finding the temperature at two different time interval which are at a difference of one minute so in this case uh, we say we will not find much difference in the temperature reading rather i is, can tell that temperature reading in both are same correct so which means since uh, there is no much time difference between the measurement of the temperature uh, the reading uh, is does not also will not take much difference right so such type of auto uh, such type of relation we call it as auto correlation okay so next is uh, uh, about the spatial data so when the ordered data sets where attribute values involve spatial characteristics uh, uh, then it is said to be a spatial data when i say spatial characteristics uh, it might involve the uh, 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 position area wavelength etc so example is the data related to weather report uh, that is collected for a variety of uh, geographical locations uh, suppose consider this as an example wherein uh, uh, we are identifying the weather report at uh, different locations and at uh, uh, different uh, uh, months in a year so as we have studied about uh, uh, temporal autocorrelation we do have a spatial autocorrelation which tells that and objects that are physical close tend to be similar in the other as well so when i say that say now consider i am going to find a, a temperature at two different location at the same time and these two locations are very close to each other say uh, suppose i am considering uh, uh, temperature uh, in this particular room in this particular classroom and uh, outside the classroom so since these two location the inside the classroom and outside the classroom in the same premises right so uh, the temp there will be no much difference in the temperature so such type of uh, auto correlation we call it as a spatial auto correlation so this is about your spatial data so so far we have studied about uh, different uh, data sets uh, that is record data uh, graph based data and ordered data Thank you students.